So this is Rutgers and Marine, and uh, we are a boat equipment manufacturer. Uh, we have two main uh, categories of uh, boat equipment that we manufacture. It's uh, deck hardware and sail hardware. And the deck hardware we sell to sailors, and uh, yeah, for multi-boats also. Uh, and, uh, and to ship your uh, boat yards, boat builders. Uh, while uh, sail hardware we primarily sell to sail makers. My name is Ludwig Hannaberg and uh, I'm the technical manager and uh, designer at uh, Rutgers and Marine. Started work here after I had uh, made a circumnavigation uh, four years with my family. Uh, by then I was, when I came, before I sailed uh, and after I sailed I worked with uh, strength analysis of nuclear power plants. But uh, when I came home, I felt that I wanted to work with something that I really had passion for. So I got the opportunity to get this uh, job developing uh, boat gear instead. Um, but I have some use for the strength analysis here at uh, Rutgers, where we make a lots of uh, high strength products like uh, blocks and uh, uh, sheet travelers. And so we have a big range of products, but maybe 1,000 end products. And uh, built out of uh, thousands of parts and we make all the parts uh, in, in the house here uh, all manufacturing steps so we have a very big range of machines and uh, manufacturing methods in this house Ludwig started the tour by showing us the factory and like he said there were a lot of machines it's quite impressive that a fairly small factory and staff equip so many boats all over the world. So this was how the company was started once, 1976. All right. Uh, before that, uh, this is uh, the rings, part a part of the ring that is in every sail in the world. Yeah. And uh, before uh, we started making the products, every sail maker sewed the ring into the sail. Oh, yeah. It was like a, I don't know, maybe half an hour's work to yeah. bound the ring on the, in the sail. Also uh, make some of the sizes in titanium. Oh, because just uh, to save weight or just also no, for the strength? No, actually it's for, no, not for the strength either, either. it's for uh, carbon uh, sales oh. uh, because of uh, galvanic uh, corrosion. Oh, so, okay. Because it's, uh, carbon fiber is like uh, gold or platinum yeah, in, yeah. in the galvanic uh, chemical It's scale. more noble than... Uh, yeah, so even the stainless acid proof steel yeah. corrode in a uh, carbon sale. That's so uh, we use non-conductive titanium okay. to uh, prevent that. And, uh, and yeah, then this problem is totally eliminated. Yeah, that's... but it's very difficult to make them in titanium. It uh, has totally different uh, properties. So uh, we are the only ones supplying uh, any product like this in titanium. Now, have that, if you do them in titan titanium. I guess that's pretty brittle, isn't it? Titanium compared yeah, that, to there, there, are, there are several different uh, uh, grades of titanium. Yeah. So uh, it's necessary to have a grade that is uh, both non-conductive and uh, also allows us to shape it in this way. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. I never thought about that with sail, but it's carbon. With yeah. The galvanic so so you, usually, if you fit sail fittings into a carbon sail, you need to use either a webbing solution. Yeah. Uh, so you don't get in contact with the metal part and the sail plastic. Okay. 
or, or uh, titanium uh, or not can, yeah you don't want to use gold or platinum <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so. or titanium if you want to have metal parts in direct contact with it. These guys work with assembling the catches and port lights. From a piece of stainless steel plate, stamped the shape into it, we have cut the, the edges with the water yet. Mm -hmm. And then we have welded uh, this uh, welding uh, nuts and studs mm. with a welding robot. And then we have sent it to electropolishing. Uh, and then we are manually or with a robot polishing uh, the, 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 yeah, the visible piece uh, side of the, the frame. Uh, and uh, then sent the mounting with the hinges that we have injected uh, in the house and the knobs that we have injected in the house. Mm. and uh, an acrylic glass uh, that we have um, milled to uh, get the right shape and to fit the seal mm. and uh, also this uh, closing hooks that uh, also are shaped in the house from stainless steel mm. so uh, this is uh, more or less the complete port light yeah. we also supply it with a, a fixing plate and the ABS inner frame so that uh, looks nice from the inside. Yeah. A lot of steps. A lot of steps. Yeah. And there are so many different models. Yeah. And we can also supply them in... Uh, yeah. This is actually a stainless steel frame that is powder coated. Black. Okay. Or with those some white yeah. as well. Do you have one model that is most uh, not popular but that is that you produce more of? No, no. That one. Yeah, this one. What should you think about when you're buying line locks or...? Clutches, rope clutches. Uh, um, it's very important that if you... I mean, today many are going down in dimension. Uh, so they're replacing the old uh, rope pallier with a stronger Dyneema. And then they go down maybe from 12 to 8 millimeters. Yeah and uh, the clutch will not perform as well on an 8mm rope as on a, a 12mm rope. No. Uh, I mean, the, the bigger dimension the rope is, uh, uh, the, the easier it is for the clutch to hold the rope. Yeah. Uh, so However, a clutch that is made from 8 to 12, you will always get the maximum holding power at 12. Yeah, yeah. Al always. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have adapted uh, a bit to that uh, by uh, providing uh, a new cam piece that you can so you can replace the cam piece or buy a new clutch w mm. w that looks the same uh, otherwise, but uh, it works with smaller ropes. Uh, so so we can make this one in. Uh, you can buy them in up to five pieces side by side and you, you can actually mix so you have uh, this one you can have down to four millimeters so you could have a four millimeter uh, rope on one uh, clutch and a 12 millimeter rope okay uh, on the next clutch yeah. so you, you have a very wide range of uh, ropes in the same uh, set of clutches and this uh, stronger this one holds up to 750 kilos and uh, this uh, the next model is up to 1200 kilos and this works between uh, 8 and 16 millimeters. Oh wow. But uh, it's one cam for 8 to 12 and, uh, and one from 12 to 16. That's um, 1200 kilos. So I mean, what are the applications? Mostly, I mean, I guess I mean, it's uh, for the halyards? Yeah, mostly for the halyards. I mean, <laughs> normally you want to clutch just to save winches. Yeah. I mean, a winch is uh, expensive and heavy, so uh, uh, but you won't use a big clutch like this for a sheath line. You never use it for uh, forces like that. But there are uh, there are some doing it, but normally, I mean, it's for different uh, uh, halyards and uh, spinnaker pole uh, handling and uh, mm. uh, kick. Uh, 
lift. Uh, yeah. all, all, all ropes going up in the mast, uh, more or less. Uh, yeah. Is this more or less the limit, would you say, like 1500 kilos where you have a, like a handle system like this? I've seen these older ones where you have this on bigger boats. Yeah, uh, jammers. So jammers, yeah. It's normally jammers, so you can't release them under load. No. We have a, we have a bigger size, the combined touch and jammer that uh, carries up to 2000 kilos. Uh, and uh, is there a difference in the mechanism? Yeah, it's, it has actually it has this mechanism, uh, but it also uh, has it has double mechanism and one mechanism that just pulls uh, two uh, cams to each other. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And that one, so under very high load, uh, you you can't uh, release it without tensioning the winch first. But uh, under low load, you can still use it as a clutch. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, f for really high load applications uh, on big boats, uh, you should na normally have a dedicated uh, winch for that yeah. uh, that rope. Yeah. Uh, like uh, like the halyard on the 60 foot. I, I I wouldn't recommend to use uh, a clutch. I, I no. think you should use you should have a winch for your uh, for yeah. your hand. This is uh, parts to. Uh, all the parts in our uh, 80 millimeter plane bearing block, standard shackle block. Mm -hmm. So uh, all the parts are made in house except the shackle that we have purchased. Um, so when we mount this, uh, this is a set screw that uh, holds uh, the blockhead. Can you can release it to uh, have, have it turning or or lock it to prevent it from turning? So it's uh, quite easy set up like this. Yeah. Like a puzzle. Right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, then uh, purpose. Yeah, and then we just uh, shape this rivet and mm. it's uh, ready mounted mm. with a shackle. Um, so this is what's being done with every block. Yeah, yeah. and uh, this is. Uh, the block sides in, in this blocks are made of from a very special composite, so they have no metal reinforcement. It's only the composite uh, holding the whole load. Mm. And this one has a working load of 2,000 kilos. Mm. Uh, breaking load is 3,600 kilos. Wow. So it's a really, really strong, almost indestroyable block, mm. as long as you, you use it right. So mm. it's a really good block. And uh, th this one has a um, plane bearing. Uh, which I recommend to use in almost every application on the boat. Uh, the, the plane bearing is the most uh, undestroyable solution and it's also very very low friction especially at high loads. Mm. Uh, ball bearings I don't recommend at all, maybe for side loads but not for the actual uh, carrying the actual uh, 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 yeah, in the actual yeah. direction, because uh, balls, uh, even though they're, if, they're, if they're made in a very very strong material, you, you p uh, push on to in uh, uh, yeah. to the maximum. No, um, small surface area. Yeah, it's extremely small point you are pushing on on, on uh, both ends of the ball, which will make it oval, uh, even at quite low loads. So typically a ball bearing block, it's, it feels very good, good in the store, but mm. when you actually put some load on it and uh, pull the rope through it, you will feel every single ball like this, uh, okay. while the plain bearing block uh, goes smoothly even under high load. If you have a block that is uh, supposed to work, really work with moving ropes during high loads, then you need a roller bearing block, or it's preferable with a roller bearing block. Uh, because on the roller bearing block, you, you, uh, all, uh, it's, um, the load is distributed over uh, like a line instead of uh, just one point. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's distributed over a bigger area, yeah. uh, so it's more difficult to turn a roller to become uh, oval in shape uh, uh, than a ball. And, uh, but, but it's a lot more expensive. A block like this is like uh, $300 and this is less than $100. And uh, so, uh, for most applications, I, I would prefer this block.
Is there a reason why why the roller bearing block is made of metal and the other one is composite? Uh, this is a really high strength block. Yeah. Otherwise, it's. Uh, I mean, we, we could have made this from composite. So, uh, but it, it's a more uh, exclusive uh, block and. Uh, it's more t more expensive to make it in uh, mm. so on the expensive block like this uh, you, you, you can put uh, more expensive materials uh, yeah. but the the bearing material is made in composite oh it is okay yeah, so it's an aluminium sheave uh, and the bearing material in the composite and that uh, w when we developed this block we wanted it to be for uh, fatigue loads, uh, it's very difficult with the uh, bearings, uh, roller bearings, uh, ball bearings. And we wanted a block that could uh, survive at least 15,000 cycles up to its working load. So we put this one in a test bench and we pulled it 15,000 times up to 2,500 kilo again and again and again. And we destroyed bearing material after bearing material. Uh, and uh, But finally I found a... Uh, a material that actually could survive this uh, very rough treatment. Mm. So uh, th they've been very well tested, and uh, it, it's a really, really extreme material in uh, in this roller. So I, I won't tell you. <laughs> it was a lot of work to find it. So <laughs> I, I won't tell you the name of it. So this is part of what you do. This is part of. Yeah, part of your I, I'm job, right? responsible of developing new products and also. Uh, uh, yeah, product development on the existing products. So uh, w we we try all the time to improve our existing products in different ways. So or maybe uh, we uh, change the way of manufacturing a, p a piece, and uh, then uh, I need to be a part of that yeah. change. Yeah, of course. And then also we uh, develop uh, totally new products or extend our product ranges every year. A big thanks to Ludwig and Rutgerson for the tour. We had a great time and it's always fun to learn something new.